So today starts uh, a subchapter of the saving of Corlier. Uh, she is outfitted with a really interesting one-cylinder gasoline engine that, as far as we can tell, has absolutely no compression. Uh, she's got a, a little sort of quasi-velvet drive transmission behind her, and uh, we are going to pull her tear down and and rebuild her. Uh, RJ, what's the, the name on the... It is a Kermath, Kermath Detroit. That's... It's built in Detroit. Uh, the Kermaths are famous, of course. They... they <laughs> I've never seen a Kermath this small, though. Uh, the Kermaths I've seen have been six, eight, and even 12-cylinder behemoth engines, uh, even a Kermath di uh, diesel. So we know we've got an extremely well-made engine and even a famous engine. So we're in the process now. R RJ is working to uh, free it up. Uh, we will pull it and uh, what well, it's held on by a series of what, four Four motor mount bolts, uh, the coupler to the drive shaft. And that's pretty much it. Some and uh, we're not really worried about uh, bringing a chain fall over and lifting her out. I, we we kind of guess that two of us should be able to lift this, but we may be surprised. It's cast iron, so uh, who knows what we'll find? But we're going to make her make her purr, make her run like a clock. So we pulled the engine out and did a little research discovered that she's a Kermath Sea Puff, 12 horsepower, haven't quite figured out how old this particular engine is yet. Uh, we can see a, a little starter on this side, a tiny flywheel. But we do have an issue, unfortunately. This engine was not properly winterized, and as a result, we've got a pretty obvious crack in the head. Uh, we're bringing in a, a fellow who is sort of a magician with marine engines to give us a sense of, of what we are facing here before we start tearing her down. Uh, the Kermas parts are still very much available. Uh, we'll have to rebuild the the exhaust. This is so so common in these old marine engines. Uh, under that wrapping uh, is uh, it's all cast iron, and over the years, it just it as we can see, it is broken inside. And I'm sure the only thing that's holding it together is the uh, the tape that's on the outside. So, but that's easy. These are all just plumbing parts. The transmission just rolls over so nicely, so smoothly. Transmission's in great shape. But our concern has to do with the the head, and if the head's uh, cracked, then of course there's always a concern that the block may be as well. So we'll know more once we tear it down. Conceivably, could get the head brazed and welded uh, and, and make the engine serviceable again, since this is not a high compression engine. But uh, if the block is cracked, then we'll, we'll be facing making a decision. So whether or not it's worth rebuilding this engine, um, which has a, quite a bit of historical value, or uh, simply replacing it with a new one.